Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome again to the International Virtual Course, Geophysical Engineering Department, Faculty of Mining and Petroleum Engineering, Bandung Institute of Technology. As a reminder, this virtual course will be held about two weeks from 6 until 70, 17 September 2021. And uh, this course is coordinated by uh, Dr. Wahyu Dipanadi, lecturer from Geophysical Engineering, Bandung Institute of Technology. And today, our instructor is Associated Professor Bapak Budi Sulis Tijo. I hope I spell your name correctly. Yes, correct. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Bapak Budi Sulis Tijo, pro, uh, lecturer from Bandung Institute of Technology. And how are you today, sir? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are very happy to have you here to share your knowledge and experiences to all the students. And ladies and gentlemen, our topic for this session is Applied Geophysics for Environment. And I am Harmita Lestari as a moderator for today. As uh, information, I am from Geophysical Engineering, Bandung Institute of Technology. So uh, first, let me to share my screen because I will read the uh, CV from our instructor. Okay, so today is the third day of International Virtual Course, uh, the session two, and our topic is Applied Geophysics for Environment. Our instructor is Associated Professor Bapak Budi Sulistijo. This is the CV from our instructor, Bapak Budi Sulistijo. Uh, he is uh, from Engineering Guild. Oh, I'm sorry, I am wrong here. Uh, mining Engineering. Am I right, uh, Pak? Yep. In this screen, I think I uh, Engineering Geology. Sorry. <laughs> No, I'm from mining the mining department. Yes, yes. Uh, the education and qualification expertise group exploration of earth resources, expertise applied geology, and in senior from ITD, MFSC from University of New South Wales, Australia, and PhD from University of New South Wales, Australia. And he is the lecturer of Mining Engineering Department, Faculty of Mining and Petroleum Engineering, Bandung Institute of Technology. Uh, his skills and expertise is engineering geology, hydrogeology engineering, geophysics, and cars. Uh, his previous publication over 30 publication on Google Scholars and over 30 citations. His latest publication is uh, the resistivity structure of uh, alluvial in geothermal prospect using time domain electromagnetic electromagnetic survey proceeding world geothermal congress 2015 melbourne australia 2015 and numerical modeling of abscidence mechanism in underground coal mine in indonesia and the next is integrated site investigation method to analyze subsurface sub con condition for the, I'm sorry, for the belt conveyor uh, proceeding of International Symposium on Earth Science and Technology 2012, Bandung. The conceptual method of cross-well se seismic reflection for the underground coal mining planning in Indonesia, proceeding of in the International Symposium of Earth Science and Technology 2012, Bandung. Uh, his awards uh, in 2005 of Fight of Innovation Award 2005 Bandung Institute of Technology and 2012 uh, Satya Lanchana Karya Satya 20 years President of uh, Republic of Indonesia. Okay, uh, I stop share now. I'm sorry. We will wait until the lesson finish. Okay. 
okay. Uh, Pak Budi, you have about one hour and 30 minutes to deliver your course materials and 30 minutes to question and answer sessions. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Bapak uh, Profesor Budi Sulistijo. You may share your uh, presentation now. And to all the participants, please enjoy the course. Pak Budi, time is yours. Thank you very much, moderator. Welcome. Uh, my help, my can, my help, uh, uh, present my, uh, still the S is, is able. Right? Yes, please. Can, can you? I share, can I share yes. my? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, please. Was di disabled. Does does any problem? Okay, now I can do it. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay. Good afternoon, thank everyone. Uh, can you see just my slide? Can please, yes, clearly. Uh, clearly my point? Yes, okay, thank you. clearly. This uh, time, I will present uh, the course with title of Applied Geophysics for Environmental. Uh, first one, I uh, deliver about the intro introductions. First one is, if talk about the geophysics, this mean about the application of principle of physics to the earth, maybe this is a very simple thing. But usually for the global view, we talk about a broad application. The second one, physics of rock could be different depend on the physical properties. So different physical properties will be measured with different equipment. So this is an example. In the, for the landslide detection in earth conveyor, we can see clearly by combining combining with uh, other methods such like as uh, phone CPT, using test speed or borehole, we can help more clearly of the landslide area in certain area. Because we know the geophysics is, is indirect method. So we must stress it, we must stress that Everyone or engineering geophysics, or engineering geology, environmental engineering, or civil engineer will be will apply the geophysic method if other method fail to de to delineate the field condition or too expensive using the current method. But most of them as the, what they call, accuracy, accuracy similar with direct method. So this is a problem. So in this case, we must choose what's the best method according to the physical properties in this area. The aim of the course is to localize, to localize subsurface geological structure and then landslide, contaminant, and the measure the physical type, physical type indirectly. The measurement can be done from the ground surface, sea, air, and the whole area. This is some example. This is some ambiguity. Why not too many civil engineer, engineer uh, civil engineer, engineer prefer using geophysics for site investigation? This you can see here in the surface area, there is a very high crustivity value. And around this area, we find this very high crustivity value. If we just think about the value of crustivity, maybe we consider this physical properties is similar with this proper physical properties. 
in fact in here maybe we can we can find that like a batholith or massive igneous rock in here or oh, but in here maybe we are, we found this very low material very dry and very low material or oh, some many cases maybe we can get lava around this area so physical properties in high crustivity value here and restivity here may be similar because all of them is from here is in rock intrusion here is lava but in some cases we we can find this uh, if we find here is dry soil maybe the strength is very low if compared around this area so we call it ambiguity so in this case how to solve ambiguity problem in geophysics for the environment in this case in favor we can maybe like contaminant or landslide or any any type of the uh, environment sorry sorry yes. Geophysics, we call here, I'll just start from the beginning. Global, global pure geophysics, deduction of physical properties of Earth, such as a geomatic field. Meanwhile, applied geophysics for environment is investigation of specific and relatively small scale and shallow. So we stress here specific, relatively small scale, and shallow, such as fault but here is fault in cell area fault stratification usually we talk, we, uh, we stress on the series cell landscape contaminant gas and groundwater this example usually for we work geophysic usually will be applied in very dangerous area something like this because we are using conventional direct methods too dangerous or too expensive. But the other hand, we must solve the problem around this area, something like this. Civil engineer asks very accurately, similar with the direct method. So this is sample, this is debris calculate or interpret from the seismic refraction and calibrate from the CPT value. So actually from this picture, we can see where is the original soil or original material and where, where is the debris position. So we can see from here, we can see possibility landslide or if we want to repair this area, where is how deep of the pile, pile in this area. Because if we bring this equipment or drilling equipment to down, down this area, it's very dangerous one. So why civil engineer want to apply geophysical method in this area? Because too expensive using this equipment or too dangerous. But the other side, they ask very accurate results and cheaply. If we talk about geophysics, we talk about the what, what's the best method. In here, we, we, we can divide in static. Distortion in static field are measured to, to delete the feature and casing of them. Natural field, magnetic, gravity, radiometric. Maybe artificial field using electrical potential gradient. Dynamic strength, dynamic strength on and or, and or time arrival of the returning signal that are sent to the ground are measured. We can use directly seismically. Many, in many cases in the environment using seismic refraction compared to the seismic re reflection. Even though the, in, the, in the current time, there are many equipment or software 
which can be used for the seismic both seismic refraction and seismic reflection. In maybe can using uh, indirectly using very low frequency. What is the usually problem in the application of geophysics for environment or for civil engineer? First, we talk about the view from the environment or civil engineer. The problem is first a budget, initial survey. They talk about the whole budget because we know in many cases, geophysical tech, Geophysical method for the environment that they just consider just with money and, and costly. And in some cases, they don't know how the problem to solve uh, the, their problem using geophysical method. Because most of them familiar with direct method. And second, uh, third one is about Side information. The side information is so limited because civil engineer or fundamental engineer usually talk about the direct method with drilling, CPT, or, or any direct sampling, test bit, and so on. And the fourth one is the deadline is very, very limited to solve the problem in the environment or in, uh, in the environment, especially on land slide. And uh, what is the best monitoring from this area? From here, usually, they, call, uh, they discuss with geologists. And geologists, they start with interpret, interpret, uh, interpretation of the drilling log and talk about geological condition, and then I make a geological model. From this geological point, the geophysics start to interpret possibility. What is initial physical model? From the initial physical model, such as a condition of plant, of contaminant condition stratification, they start choose which was the best method. Only one method, or must be com combined with other mode, single method or combined method. And then the basic start what is the best procedure? Because apply one side to the other side, every side is own character. Maybe one side is success, but if we use directly to other side, maybe unsuccess. The next one, sometimes geophysics is just a side, just interpreter, not is contractor. So they must choose contractor. In Indonesia, many geophysics is part of the contractor. And then function of GBCC is make some supervision to contractor to work according to the, the problem, according to the real condition in this area. And then start with field operation. It is contractor. From here, the contractor start with field data, sorry. Field data must have a good data and operation report daily basis. And then from the data, data, uh, field data, operation report, geophysics will make a data assessment according to field condition. And then start with physical interpretation. What is value from the like from the restivity to the physical interpretation. As I mentioned previously, high crestivity in the top and high crestivity in the bottom 
maybe the physical interpretation become different or maybe similar depend on the physical model of geology and then correlation the correlation is important de depend on the distance between measurement point or in receptivity we call electrode distance of electrode depend on the coupon is depend on the open distance and then from the so we the accuracy actually depend on the correlation correlation depend on the point of information so geophysics must be careful in interpretation in correlation in determine distance of the information point and then this is a critical condition because they must make some geological and engineering interpretation and from here geophysics must state what is ambiguity and limitation about this the method on i call success and limitation because in many cases geophysics geophysical method cause some ambiguity if we don't have a correct field data from here we report send to the geologist and the geologist make a final geological model and the report from all data from geophysics and geology the user in here the environmental engineer or civil engineer start make critical evaluation and the important point is must be integrated with other method not single geophysical method because we, are, we only use single geophysical method there are many ambiguity based on the integrated integrated evaluation start make a final opinion so this is flow chart how the geophysic work can be applied for the environmental with successful successfully which if only part of the section and they make some conclusion maybe the result for the environmental application will be not satisfied but in field there's many problem from the environmental engineer or civil engineer but that for geophysics usually is not enough or they consider it's not appropriate using geophysics for the our problem they prefer using like drilling like this and cpt to determine in case like uh, this for the landslide to determine which the landslide failure yeah, you prefer using this one. So they don't want to use other method because they consider it's waste money and not equivalent. But here, most of the informal or civil engineer forget something. They just make correlation between two, bor two borehole or between CPT with large distance. The, the, the second one, in many cases, your physical survey poorly integrate with other survey. Your basic survey just used independently, not integrated with other method. 
Geophysics just report something like this. They only talk about the high crystallinity value. Just some, in many cases, just make some interpretation something like this. Just like this. Or in some cases like this. And maybe something like this. And then they make some interpretation in here and this here. What's the meaning is this method is not integrated with other method, something like this. The third one, the user is not understand scale and implication of the geophysical interpretation. So actually, geophysical interpretation is part of the GBC to understand how to explain of the data, GBC data like this, to become civil engineer data or environmental engineer data, which can be understand for them. In this example, if we integrate it, if we can integrate with other methods from here, from this area, this very high, very, very high activity is part of the fracturing area. So it be like this. This is part of the fracturing area. And the boundary, this you can see clearly, boundary of the of the CPT value is hard rock here. Scale of independence. You can see here, if we are using just borehole, we just make correlation between this one and this one. But we yeah, are using geophysics with more detail of the money, uh, data here. maybe five meter or 10 meter, we can maybe we can get better under subsurface interpretation, maybe something like this. Not just make some like this. We talk about scale. So if, if we talk about the application of engineering to uh, geophysic for the environmental, which means we must talk about the point of monitoring. Or the, maybe this electrode, maybe this some point observation, maybe the geopon distance. We, we cannot just talk about the how many kilometers, but we talk about the how distant between information. This important one. The, the most a problem is this one. Geophysical interpretation is a key with other direct method. So how to solve the problem? We must have detailed geological mapping or direct some direct method in there. So how here? How we can know this? Some this is a fracturing. There are some mapping around this area. So based on the mapping integrated study, we can give more detail about the surface and subsurface condition around this area. This is a typical example. We must talk about the, in this case, uh, application for the landslide. GBC cannot work independently, must be combined with uh, engineering geological mapping. So we can see here. Uh,
like the some maybe some fracturing or micro fault here or maybe some subsidence or maybe some slide around this area so we can see actually this array already slide around maybe more than four meter originally this support is is high this original support so how to solve problem this is line state of subsidence because we can see here this original slide and then current slide current position so this important thing is we must make some integrated uh, mapping not just stand alone geophysical method we must combine with other method one from uh, for direct method why they have problem with uh, geophysical interpretation is disagree with other information maybe there are some wrong interpretation from geologists because maybe geologists have poor for recovery borehole maybe because of rock condition maybe equipment and the second one geological interpretation difficult to understand or not appropriate and the third one unresolved ambiguity in geological model what is ambiguity two layer physically different but in geophysical properties similar this will become problem two or two or more layer physically different but in geophysical properties have similar condition from geophysical geophysical field so the subsurface could be very different from expectation what is different this mean maybe there are some uh cave or underground hole underneath the this area if we found some like hole or space maybe some method is not suitable for the that condition because geophysics must choose what the best method for that area or maybe the uh, 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 quality of data is very poor because contractor is not work properly why they not work properly because maybe some climate condition maybe external disturbance because the method is sensitive to the outside disturbance and then the third one maybe interpretative tool is inadequate for the high variable subsurface condition because there are many software is have limited limitation even though there's more better and better from the contactor point i mean contact geophysical contactor site condition is very difficult it's too steep meanwhile for the certain method they have some limitation of the slope or distance to the slope or distance to the fault and so on and the, the second one decreasing coverage due to equipment failure with uh, and, so, and so on and maybe in the same time there are other equipment work together in this area so, so the equipment make other equipment make disturbance to the other equipment as well so we must choose what is the best time to measure 
geophysics if some method will be applied in the same time in this area. The next question, this is a very difficult one. Do, do we need geophysics to solve the problem? This is challenging. For my experience, not all problems can be solved using geophysics. If we try to apply geophysics, the result is be not, uh, not suitable for the application in the, in the real condition. The second one, collection. What is the available data? Do, do we need a laboratory measurement or software according to the field condition? For large survey, I suggest to do some recognition survey for the large projects to, to test this method is suitable for the, uh, the problem for the site or not. This is problem. Sometimes we have problem. Look, you can see here, and the terrain condition is very difficult. Something like this. Maybe certain method is not suitable for the, uh, the terrain like this. Uh, this is another say, example. Maybe we, we work under the gassy area. In, in the borehole, there are many methane gas. Methane gas, that means we have to use equipment which is not sensitive to the fire. Or maybe we work under the dusty condition, something like this. So general survey, we have to cross, we say, cross the general structure, cross the prospect area, so we can, we can, if we can cross the prospect, I just mean we can uh, see the where is the anomaly, where is the no anomaly. And then for the practical penetration, should reach the base anomaly. The difficult thing is what the anomaly value to decide what is the anomaly value, which the no anomaly value. How many annual value fail around this area? Which call, which so the real anomaly because there are many disturbance around this area. The fourth way is is there any access to the location? How many hours to walk this area? How big equipment will be used around this area? So in may, if many cases, if the area is very difficult and the equipment is so heavy too heavy and the cost is limited, maybe we cannot use geophysics to solve the problem. To get a good data, especially in the field, in the collecting data, we have a good semi-scale crew, not expert, semi-scale crew. And then the, the crew must be supply with a uh, standard form. If we are using the manual measurement, something like this. So they just, the, the crew just put a, a value and we said just make a simple uh, uh, mathematic, mathematical using the a simple calculator. 
if we are using automatic equation, we need back up in several time. Every measurement must be back up. And then we must some uh, observation to do some doing the correction on the on this area. Do we need some reduction data? And the fourth one is presentation using the simple thing using profile, map, or section. This is an example. This is 1D of the physical method. Here, we see some very low resistivity here. And then here's very low. And then from very low, we start higher and higher resistivity value. And then in here, we found low resistivity value with similar value from this area. And underneath low resistivity value here, we found this other higher resistivity value. So if we just talk about the data, and then this is usually supply by contractor. The function of the geophysics is how to make interpretation, which can be understand the end of the user. So in this case, we can see this some example. If we see something like this, we must check what is the electro, uh, electro, electro conductivity of the river or TDS total diesel soil on the river. Because we know that if we are using resistivity method, the relation between TDS and electro conductivity with resistivity value. And the second one, we must make some mapping, detail mapping around the area, coverage area. We cannot stand alone. So here we can see river is a from if the from the river measurement, they say, oh, this is salt water. So that means some intrusion, salt water here. And from low receptivity become higher and higher receptivity value. This means this is some salt water intrusion starting with the transition zone and start with fresh water. What is high receptivity value here? Very high receptivity. High high receptivity value is dry sand. Dry sand. Meanwhile, high cost value here, when maybe not the high medium one, it's become filled, it's a bedrock. If we see something low activity here value with similar with this one, it's not meaning this similar physical properties with this one. In this case, low activity value is clay. Here, low activity is transition zone. This is important. How to bring the uh, geophysical data uh, to the end user makes understand what the value of the of the geophysic test one. Yeah. This is a, I make some simple table. Usually there's many, we, if we consider remote sensing as geophysic, there are some method, geophysic, which can be applied for the environment, such as remote sensing. And then now we can use a more simple one using drone or maybe some uh, unmanned uh, remote aeroplane using high resolution air photo. Miss Alamas. It's not 
uh, many people using Miss Alamas. Some safe, hotel, safe potential using already established. There are many methods that's been used for the uh, environmental problem. As TP2, there are two lateral and uh, lateral, and then to detect EDS content. So we can bring the velocity value to the TDS and the TDS to the upper stability value. Radar, relatively new. Very low frequency, I don't know this uh, new or not because we success to apply for the very low frequency actually, or sorry, some system uh, to for the pollution detection. And then magnetic, magnetic is actually new for here, not actually this in, in, indirectly. Magnetic, we use magnetic method for to delineate of the source of uh, base rock actually. And then from the base rock, we can know the form of the valley and so on. And we can see the, uh, like groundwater condition in the area. So by know the groundwater condition and then uh, subsurface condition, we can know what happened if there are some leakage of the liquid or gas to the ground area. So we can, uh, we can detect which area in the, uh, in in the case is gas effect to the surface, how wide area will be affected by the gas leakage, and then seismic is many method established using velocity. Dosing rather very new. Dosing is very simple thing, and then has been used for long long time ago by price or by, by shaman to looking for water using two stick, using two stick. And then the last one, what we call modified self potential. Similar with potential, but uh, using this uh, natural potential, we can know the Subsurface condition. There are some problem application of the. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Some limitation. Remote sensing, we have problem used from the ambiguity for composite color. High resolution, we have problem in the real color. Miss elements for the uh, environment such as the plum dispersion. In some cases, we need a very contrast between the between the anomaly and the background uh, and then self potential using the surface disturbance there are so many uh, constraint here for the activity we are most of probable but equivalencies and suppression And then TDS content using receptivity, we have problem with equivalency and suppression as well. Magnetic, there are some ambiguity. And seismic, there are some ambiguity as well. This is a several method. This can be has been used for the environmental. And so very successful to solve problem in environmental such as for the uh, pollution detection, land set, and so on. To 
So the question is, if we, see, we from this table, there are many methods can be used to the environmental problem, can be applied for the environmental problem. But the question is, why, why geophysical, geophysical, geophysical method has less application in environment? The problem is the physical properties of many environmental anomalies do not differ significantly from the house, from the site, from the environment, from the real condition. This condition costs so many targets. If there are so many targets, instantly it's not promising because the civil engineer or environmental engineer only one, one, one or two target. In many cases, there are many target appear from the geophysical method. The fourth one is more the budget. In many cases, attention to environment using geophysical relatively very small. This slide, I put. So why there are not too many support for the research or survey? So because they have limited budget and they consider it's not just with, with money. So why in many cases, they not support the geophysic for the, to solve the problem in environment. What is, because we talk about the tropical area, what is uh, focus on the tropical area? Environmental constraint in tropical area occur widely range of geologic setting, wide range of geologic setting. But we must honestly interplay only two important physical settings. First, the tropical climate and humid. Because most of equipment geophysics is very sensitive to the to a tropical climate and humid. Heavy rainfall, humid, and so on. So we must choose books. What is treatable method for the area? And then say, uh, next question is, Selection appropriate method. First one is what suitable method. And next one is selection of appropriate method. What is the best method to solve the problem? I stress this is we cannot just choose one method success and then bring to other area success. I'm not guaranteed not like that. Because geophysical is specific very specific. And the, if we can solve the best method, the, the second was, what is optimum point or line spacing for economic consideration? I just example, if we talk about the electrical, electrical receptivity, uh, sorry, receptivity method using the, what we call, many, many uh, common people call Q-scanning. I call electrical receptivity, reciprocal uh, electric, ERT. Electrical reciprocal, uh, focus, ERT, yeah. The question is, what is the best distance? Distance of the geopoint, not talk about the kilometer. What is distance between geopoint? What is distance between electron? What is distance between measurement point? This is important. But we must consider about the economic consideration, not just measure. We talk about the economy. It's 
This is not of reason. This is economic. This is a business. If talk about reason, maybe, maybe we never talk about the, 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 the some cases not talk about the budget, but for the economic point, we always talk about the budget. So we how to reduce the budget with the best result. What is the best method to solve the problem? We must know the geology and physical properties of the rock. Topography and climate. The topography is very important because some method is not suitable if too steep. Maybe if the slope more than 10 degrees, is no, the correction is, is not correct, even we put some correction. And then objective of a survey. What is our looking for? What is anomaly? The fourth one is required information. To, to use some method, we need some information, basic information about the area. And the fifth one is subsurface survey. One more. I can. I always said we cannot just use a uh, standalone of the geophysical survey because geophysical survey is indirect method. We need some additional direct methods, such as drilling and so on, test pit and so on, to do to see what is subsurface condition. Or maybe simply just. Oh, just please using two or more methods to more accurate. For the, for the user, they, they, they just want to cut down costs. And we, if, say, a cost is no problem, I suggest if we are using two or more methods in just in case high uncertainty, uncertainty. About the, what is the optimum point and line spacing for economic consideration? We must put the balance between uh, extent of information and detail of to be mapping. And then second one, element of acceptable risk of non-detection. So this is very difficult one is because the optimum point, what is the optimum between two information point? So we must adjust between our central point to anticipate depth of the, of the feature. Because if we're using narrow feature, narrow feature give a narrow anomaly. Broad feature give a broad anomaly. In some cases, for the artificial methods, such as geoelectric, depth of exploration maybe can be controlled, except such as using a longer, longer or shorter uh, electro, electro piston. But of natural field method, control of depth is not possible. So we must see how to control the depth. And then we must be the careful about the noise. In some cases, maybe noise so high. So instrument noise higher than other source, even though usually it's lower than source. Maybe we can, we have problem with disturbing field noise, tire, tire current and so on. And don't forget about terrain noise. It affect all the result 
of the measurement, like, such as geological noise, topographic noise, or location noise. Before the detailed survey, recording survey lines are always recommended, especially for the large scale project. To test effective effectiveness of the model used in terms of optimal line and point spacing. And then evaluate background value of the field or non anomaly container. Because we can see the physical property of anomaly source exhibit bit variability in properties and is what we call an isotropic effect. Which one depends on the pressure, temperature, or moisture condition. So such example, temperature. Temperature is very sensitive if we are using the electricity method or electricity method. So we, if the area is very high train of temperature, or maybe the temperature will affect on the measurement for ambiguity, maybe we can use uh, such as activity on this area. This is a typical just example. How to make some correlation? Uh, activity indicate the material properties not affected by geometry. This is a simple, very common thing. Yes. In, in some cases, we talk about we have to transfer restivity value to conductivity value. So, and then in I just saw there are many mistakes on the measurement of the uh, what we call electric, electric conductivity because there are equipment, some, some equipment using, uh, sorry, TDS. This is some equipment using using PPM and some equipment using PPT. So this look at this one, because many, many of us is familiar with PPM. So it's a one, one, 10 PPM and some equipment using PPT. So point, one oh. This is PPT. This one 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 zero ppm. So in many cases, I saw the report. They measure something like this, but in the report, they write something like this because they are familiar with ppm, but they do be using PPT. Okay, I just maybe, uh, oh, still have a time? Yes, but about 25 minutes. Oh, okay, I just quickly. Yes, uh, <laughs> thank you. Okay, still application. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Can you see this file? Yes. yes, sure. Okay, um, thank you very much. This okay. is application for the pollution detection. After we know those all the problem, now start with how to to show the the sacrifice method, geophysical uh, method for the uh, application for the pollution detection. This one is we must consider best. This geophysical method is indirect method. Indirect method. The second one must no ambiguity. No ambiguity. I stress this. No ambiguity. Must single answer. Really used for the environmental monitoring. Why? Because lack confidence in geophysical method. 
he lived in standard practice. That is direct measurement. So in this case, we must show that geophysical method as accurate as direct measurement, the key point. And then the cost less than a direct method. And the fourth one, we, we must offer this, this cost must be lower than direct method, but the accuracy similar with direct method. If we offer costs for the um, QBC uh, method for the environment detection, more expensive than direct measurement will be neglected. This example, this is seawater uh, because there are many erosion from the area. This is typical. Why there's some uh, high sediment from this area? Because there are some small island here. So man using satellite, or maybe some air photo, high resolution air photo, we can see clearly. Maybe by month by month or week by week about the direct dispersion of the seawater on this area. Or, come, or maybe we, the seawater, because we can see this uh, very uh, dark area, this mean indication high uh, suspended solid. There's some erosion, matter erosion here. Maybe effect of the sea, uh, water around this area. Or maybe you can see this sedimentation around this area. It's very, very easy. This is Miss Alamas. Miss Alamas actually first time use it, used for the fin, uh, copper fin, by the Englishman. I forgot the name. By doing very simple, what we call Miss Alamas, we consider, we consider as Usually, if we are using geophysic activity, uh, like activity method, this is a current, current point like this, and here current point like this. So the the current current direction should be like this. But if we are using Miss Alamas, we consider consider this are this is point. Is line current, not point current, but this current point. So it should be like this. This is first idea to find direction of the fin for the copper. Now we can use it with similar concept for the pollution detection for the plum, something like this. Here is current point. Sorry, this is the current point. Here, potential point. Here is borehole. Borehole from the iron. So we just put the current here and here. So it become like current point like this. Here is a current point, current line, and then uh, sorry, sorry, the current point around this area. Sorry, it is ah uh, here. Current. This is current point. Current point like this. Potential here. And then another potential moving, moving around the area. So it is the, using the geometry formula. We know the position x, y, z. Here, every point here, this measurement point, and we we can uh, we know this position from this area. So we can geometry factor. We can calculate the geometry factor. So by no by not the 
amount of injection current and we can measure the potential around this area. So using this uh, geometrical factor, we can calculate the sensitivity, apparent sensitivity value in ohmmeter. And the result is something like this. We can see to check the accuracy. First, we are we in the leakage area around this area. This is a, a what they call a dumping area. Dumping area. There are many leakages around the area. We can measure the electric electrical conductivity, electrical conductivity, and total diesel soil. From the electrical conductivity and the total result, there are some relation, very tight relation. You see very tight relation if the sensitivity value increase, I'm oh, sorry, if the TDS increase, electric conductivity increase as well. So we, from here, we can see them some value of the upper sensitivity value using this uh, Ms. Alamas. We can see here, we can see here some very high stability value. This some indicate has been contaminated area around this area using simple stability method, but using different concept of the uh, current. One if you are using, using conventional method is using this uh, current point, but using Miss Alamas one current point, another is current line. This is using this, what we call self potential. We are now we are using not single, not just double, we are using 64, 64 uh, potential. The simple is like this. So we can, same time, we, serve, we can measure directly using 64, not just two steep, uh, potential. So usually, this uh, the, the theoretical like this. This is uh, the line. So usually, the landfill so this very low sensitivity value. Oh, sorry, microfoil. This is very simple, very easy, and relatively very accurate to detect leakage or uh, landfill area. This uh, landfill this means contaminated area. Oh, sorry. This is surface water. Sorry, I stay Bahasa. If we can, from the contour of uh, Mirifort, uh, Mirifort, you think if we have some upload, we can have positive value. This is contact between uh, two uh, cycle, like Ford or so, uh, or so on. There are some, this is, or maybe some, this is more permeability than this one. Or maybe we have some crack and water flowing in the sand. Yeah, so there's a positive value. And if we have some uh, flow underneath something very uh, impermeable, we can see something like positive value. And we can use, we can apply it for the more general. This is an example. This area is very high uh, anomaly in the mini fault, and some area is very fault. In area one, area two, is some. Um, this is typical area. So from self potential value in mini fault, we can interpret something like this. So this area is part of a disturbed area while very high capacity value, uh, sorry, mini fault indicate this geological disturbance. So this is similar with, I bring back like this. Positive, this means upload or some movement. So we can apply a similar problem like this. So what is the important one is here, there's very high, very high, Mere fault here that indicate disturbance in geological structure. In cross section, what is the meaning is here run this 
around this area, spring, there are some, maybe some crack. So they are indicated a high positive like this around this. This is overburden, and there are some contact between overburden and then fracturing uh, fracturing lava. There, there are some, maybe some cracking around this area. So we have some indication here very high, but because there are some upflow here, this combination is very high like this. In generally speaking, around this area have uh, higher higher millimeter fault if compared with this area. So positive value indicate upflow. Okay. Another one is using resistivity method. It's very simple thing. Using resistivity, we if from the previous my explanation, there are some relation between total disulfide here, yeah, total disulfide with resistivity value in ohmmeter. So from here we can see actually we must be careful about water resistivity and formation resistivity. They are two different things. Formation resistivity we call true resistivity is actually actually value from the formation factor time resistivity value. So if we know this is constant, so actually by measuring this one, water uh, form uh, formation resistivity, we know actually the changing of the resistivity of the water caused by pollutant. This example, by using this concept, actually we can detect in the normal condition, such as 200 ohm meter, this is true resistivity. True resistivity is this one, formation resistivity, not water resistivity. If there are some increasing of the resistivity value, here from the 215 to, to, to 3000 uh, milligram per liter. Please remember PPT and PPM. This is PPM. We can see here with error 3%, actually from the graphic, we can see some changing from the changing of the uh, graphic pattern. So from the changing of the graphic pattern by, by using this in different time, actually we can detect changing of the water uh, TDS, total of, of contact or pollution in groundwater. This is application of the very low frequency. We can see using very frequency is, is very simple equipment. Depend on this, one more, depend on the distance measurement. We can see using the uh, in the same time, we can use for the very low frequency can be used for the magnetic method. So you can hear there are some very high resistivity value here. This indicates some gas around this area has been detected by GeoRadar. Uh, Geo this is very good. So we have uh, some correction here, uh, some cross section here, very, and then detected by GeoRadar. You also see some gas here, we must detect. And actually, this is your radar here. Here, like this. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is your radar. And some gases. And see here, this white one is gases. So, using this combination, your radar and very low gas, actually, we can detect very accurately the any gas or not in the landfill area. So, if you see something, maybe you can use the gas can come up here, or, or, or maybe we can see in some cases, this uh, landfill blow up and cause a big disaster, cause a land, big landslide around the area, like in South Bandung several years ago. Geomagnet, that is, sorry. That is typical of geomagnet, as I mentioned previously. Actually, we just detect of the 
petrochemism. So what happened if we have, we have some gases, this is on here, this is water, and this gas is actually, uh, uh, if there are some dense non-aqua phasic liquid where density of the fluid is higher than water, they're just flowing around the bedrock here. Not follow, one more, it's not follow the water, uh, water, uh, groundwater position, but follow the bedrock position. But in, in case of the like non aquifer liquid, the, the, the movement of the LNAPL, LAPL, is depend on the groundwater, not, so this different is meaning. PNAPL will follow the bedrock. Meanwhile, the LNAPL will follow the uh, surface water condition. We apply this one, Geomagnet, to know this dispersion, direct, direct uh, dispersion of the pollutant depend on the density. Okay, one more. I just, this application of dosing, maybe this is a new one. Sorry, stop cell. Can you see the my my slide? Excuse me. Can you see my slide? Yes, yes but yeah. this yes, is clearly. dosing. Yeah, dosing. This is this very old method actually. This is a dosing. Here dosing. Just see this here. What? Can see here. Using two stick. If there are some crossing here like this, that means some water or maybe some water or maybe some upflow under this area. You say here this uh, the, this person start with the crossing from this area. We are actually just flat area, but around 30 meters under we have some cave and there are some upflow from this area. We call dosing. This is a typical. Uh, I show you how success using simple equipment for the upflow water for the environment. We are using this area. Here, this is upflow flowing around this area. This is around 25 to 30 meters below the, the dispersion. And uh, the inter entrance of the cave, something like this, small, very small one. And then we can see the from the bottom cave, this, uh, this actually similar to this one. And to in enter to the uh, groundwater river, must be go to deeper area, something like this. And finally, we found upflow like this. So actually this uh, equipment is very simple. How to use this equipment to detect water, not just water, but to detect groundwater, ground, this one. If we integrate it with the using dosing, accuracy tomography, 1D stability, and salt water tracer, we can detect groundwater movement, groundwater pollution, and so on. This is a typical. We can put a tracing here using simple one, use, not using isotope, but using the salt water, just uh, simple salt water. We just pour it on this area, and then we detect in several areas here. If we can integrate it with another method, geophysical method, here yeah, using this uh, ART, and this is geophysical and drill borehole, and 1D, and what happened is 
we from here we can see actually very clearly this is for the uh, from the uh, ART is we, we can see some uh, point around this area and from point to actually from the point this point using the from first time we are using the ART to detect the point and then followed by dosing and then this a point finally you can found the point like this this one this is very runs uh, 20, 25 per centimeter number three here this is void access to the void so this is a void access to, to the up loop and this is a groundwater river something like this we we tracing on this one using the dosing so we can make some mapping on this area and this uh, up loop from the dosing and then from the using tracing we we know exactly the movement of the uh, groundwater in certain area this is what happened if we can use a combination with the one or two or three method to be sick in cars area where is where is some many cases maybe difficult one but we are using something very close distance of the art activity if we are using two one d maybe we cannot we, we cannot find the this point but they are using 2d or, or using dosing we can detect this one this is some of void detection using if we are talk about the void detection we talk about the resistivity value usually here is very high resistivity value and then start do the decreasing stiffer in the massive rock. If we know that this concept actually, so we can take here. This is KIF. Ah, here. You can see here. High capacity value is indicate the KIF. Here. Cross section here. And then if you can see a very high capacity value, actually is part of the line of the case like this. Uh -huh. So if you remember several years ago, there are some researchers said there's a big space underneath the, uh, what is called Gua Jepang. Actually it's not if, because they measure along the, this line from, parallel cave this one so they can get that look like very high big space but if we are doing something cross section like this maybe we can find something like this like some like this it's very because the stability value of the uh, uh, void is very high so using using this concept this one we can know something that is a piling foundation here we from the piling condition because we want to put a very heavy pile condition. Uh, and from here, we can see actually some very, very low stability value. What does it mean, very low stability value? This means void filled by the water. This is very high stability value, very strong rock. But if we have put some foundation area here, maybe the foundation cannot support this area, this one. So we must find the value uh, void underneath the foundation and pour it with concrete to avoid any subsidence on the surface. This different one with this one, with previous one. In previous one, I said the void indicate high capacity value, but in this case, high capacity indicate massive rock, but here. Low stability indicate the uh, void filled the water or something 
clay, something like this. It's very common in the limestone. Here another one in the very, uh, maybe very rare condition, because there's, there's some here, ram, ram, this is ram, access in mining, another ram, and then because mining started from the here and then become higher and higher like this. So it's very, maybe if they come higher, they cannot support itself. They have some cracking from this area. So you are using this uh, reticular receiving tomography. We can see here some like this, very wet, indicates some uh, rock with cracking with filled water. And this one, is a cracking area. Cracking area. This is for November, in November, and finally, uh, like very high crystallity indicate is already collapsed on this area. This is what how so uh, how the geophysics method can be used to the monitoring in the underground mining. And from the monitoring, we can see this when, when start the area become safe area or maybe, maybe become dangerous area. Okay, I save time. Moderator, I still have oh, maybe another five minutes or 10 minutes. I want, uh, I still want. I think the you know? time is uh, over, but. Okay. <laughs> If you okay. have any slides, maybe... maybe five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. Five minutes. Okay. This is a uh, some. Hmm. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, where's, oh, hang on. Hang on, this is um, fun too. Is any problem, Pak? Uh, no, it's okay, just I'm looking. Okay, uh, to all participants? Yeah, and can you see? Okay, I can see. Yeah, yes, I, I just quickly. This is application for the landslide area. It's a very well tropical area. We're focusing on the tropical area because usually in tropical area we have problems some very uh, very steep area and uh, some uh, here instability triggered by the what I mentioned previously by rainfall uh, and then by uh, instability by rainfall and then cause a very disaster like this. So we we uh, investigation problem must be uh, carried out to do some uh, be understand better understanding of the landslide because usually in the landslide in the tropical area, sorry, it's very very unique because they have this geological structure, high rainfall and human activity is caused a landslide, and if landslide occur, we must consider about the debris material with minimum cost, faster reduce potential risk to equipment and reduce loss, risk of uncertainty. This is typical. We are sometimes work with geophysical must be applied in very, very harsh condition due to the, maybe the soil or the rainfall movement and then must be carried out by very quick supply. And then the second one, we must consider with the environment. We should, in some, many cases we work in the very, very rigid area, very sensitive area. So they, they need very carefully in the survey area, they must do some minimum disturbance on the area. The, the quick one is using air photo, air photo 
I just like the quick one. Oh, this, this one. So this typical landslide. Sorry. So I just. This is a typical LSD using the 60 electrode, uh, using the UC electrode. And then we must uh, reach the stiff soil. Sorry, why I'm moving. It's a typical survey. And this cubicle uh, survey I mentioned before, we must uh, do some very quickly accurate. And then we we must give a more geological model how to movement from this area using uh, integrated data. This is typical using a small detailed data and then start with a model. And then from the model, we start how to do some repair from this area. This one example, another example, how the accurate of the uh, to create a landslide from this area. This is typical data, and this is typical of the interpretation using integrated data, using borehole, using uh, test bit, and CPT. You can see here some from the type of the geophysical, you see movement or landslide pattern. This is another cell potential using 60 electrode. This is equipment, something like this. So here, typical uh, area. This is like wet alteration product and dry alteration. Fracturing area, this indicate this upflow area. And then this indicate this wet alteration, this mean indicate become sliding area. This is combination using this uh, cell potential and uh, stipulator. This is a type of profile. This can must be combined with uh, with combined the mapping. So actually, we can see some very detail of the landslide area, where is the movement, and so on. It's a typical uh, how the accurate of ART for the Landslide detection if combined with mapping. See, uh, typical. Then, then, this is a failure condition. Uh, after several days, uh, based on the, the data, in you know, only five days before failure, landslide. And then, the typical landslide can be identified, identified clearly on this area based on the cell potential and resistivity meter. And maybe you can use some very simple thing using the temperature. temperature usually some water upflow, you can detect some increasing temperature on this area. So here, some uh, elevation, then another uh, temperature. So we can see this measure temperature and so on. Uh, uh, we can see the temperature survey around this area based on the topography and must be must be remember that the temperature must be corrected with uh, topography. This is another one, like uh, using seismic refraction for to, to detect some landslide using debris material, something like this. So from the here, why we can see why the, the soil not jump to the lower area, but settle around this area because some, as you can hear, some uh, hill, uh, uh, hill around this area. So like all I said, will be settled around this area. So from here, we can calculate the volume of the landslide. And then the must remember, the geophysical method, in this case, uh, seismic refraction must be combined with other method from direct method to get better accuracy. I think this all. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Pak Budi, for very interesting 
a course and presentation also amazing pictures that you have uh, show to for us during your presentation i hope uh, we can better understand about geophysic method in the environment and its relation between the other geoscience method uh, also like geological engineering mining engineering and civil engineering uh, ladies and gentlemen now we are going to the question and answer session if you have some question to pak budis you can open the chat box or you can see your hand so you can ask pak budi directly for the information uh pak budi talking about the applied geophysics in environment i really agree with your statement before that geophysics ca cannot stand alone we need to know and to integrate it with the other disciplines especially geology mm, before i see that uh i forgot the name but there is one participant raise his hand but I forgot his name. <laughs> oh yes, Muhammad yes, Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and good evening, Pak Budi. Yep. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Muhammad Yenal Iksan, and I am from Central State University, China. Uh, thank you for your course. It's very interesting and uh, I am very interested for the uh, your course. So I have one question about the briefing. Maybe your uh, geophysical uh, uh, application for geology. But uh, my uh, my question is was answered for your uh, explanation. But here, uh, please could you share the PPT material because I'm very interesting for uh, I am very interested for. Uh, study uh, your your material it's yep. about the ribbon right uh to looking for uh river uh, underground i'm very yep. interested about it yep i i okay i yes. saw you again hang on okay yeah it's enough, Muhammad Zainal Iksan. Yes, I think it's enough. Thank you very much for uh, your uh, yeah. opportunity. And please, could you uh, share your uh, PPT material oh, for us? All, all material. I oh, just want to share this in this. The material course, the course materials. Yes, oh, of course. Oh, OK. I give to the moderator. Yes, yeah, I think thank it's. You. Very interesting course materials. <laughs> yes, I'm very interested. This is dosing yeah. this new method. This is a, uh, what do you call this? I'm several times found this uh, outflow in the Kars area and yeah. to detect this uh, groundwater river in the Kars area. It's very, very quick, it's very simple, and then it's been tested by other methods that's very accurate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yes, this I'm very interested. Yeah. Yes. And this cannot, uh, this example, this is upflow water. It cannot be detected by using single, uh, uh, what do you call, 1D, a CPT, or maybe mm. the another yeah. method. Yeah. Uh, because I was uh, studying in nuclear engineering, maybe uh, for looking for river uh, underground, maybe using. Uh, Radioactive activity, uh, maybe using tracer uh, or perunut, right? So I'm using I think the salt water. It's too yeah, it's a very, very cheap one. <laughs> mm. I think in example in uh, Gunung Kidul, Yogyakarta, maybe using the tracer in uh, radioactivity, right? No, I, I'm. Uh, it's too expensive. I already are using in the Gunung Kidul as well in many places using just okay. salt water, just salt water table. You know, just very very yeah. cheap. Mm -hmm. But we need some. We need some accurate of the detector. Okay. 
continuous monitoring the terror every say five seconds or seven uh, ten seconds. This is a uh, the most expensive one. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Budi, for your uh, explanation. But uh, I waiting uh, waiting for the PPT material for you or for moderator. Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. Uh, any question for participants? I think I have a question, uh, Pak Budi. Um, yeah. The simple questions. Uh, what geophysical method do you use uh, most often in mining engineering and why? Thank you. Depend on the site condition. Oh. Depend on the site condition. Depend on. And then physical properties of the mine area. So if, uh, if you use um, maybe a geomagnet method, and then you link it to the another uh, method like geological method or okay. something like that. But so, so this is an example. If we are using geomagnet for site, the better the iron or deposit. Many people using the iron uh, geophysical method for the iron or deposit. Yes, you can detect anomaly of the iron or deposit but we cannot calculate the resources or the reserve because the, the value of intensity, the intensity is very broad one. So must be integrated with direct methods, mapping and then drilling. Many mistakes of UPC using to manage for the iron ore or maybe some uh, magnetic deposit. They calculate their resources and reserve, and the result is wrong. So the pattern must be uh, must be correlated with direct method mapping or dealing. That's what my from the, my opinion or my experience. Okay, because I see uh, from your pictures in the presentation. There are so many uh, methods that you used before. Yeah. And yeah. it's very interesting. Yeah, uh, we, are, we already applied this many methods depend on the physical properties of the problem. Yes. And then uh, the, 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 what we call, field condition and then winter condition. Okay, but in the mining, I, we now, there is uh, so many uh, noise like uh, I think we should uh, avoid that when we use the geophysical method yes yeah, some some example we are you some example if we are using seismic refraction in the geothermal field you, we understand we know if we are in geothermal field actually there are many noises either from the uh, natural noise or from the, uh, what to call, from the borehole in around the, or piping of the geothermal steam. If we, are, if we have the very good equipment, we can filtering all the aspect because they continuous. The pattern of the noise is continuous. But the problem is, if the pattern is not continuous, this is a problem. So the result is maybe it's not good. Depend on the equipment and then software. Okay. okay. If, we can solve, if we can solve with software or the or equipment, maybe we can use the certain equipment. But if software or, or equipment cannot solve the problem, maybe we cannot use the equipment. Yes, uh, I think there is a question in the chat box, Pabudi. You can see in the chat box from Bariska. Can can you see in the chat box? Yeah. The question is how to correlate CPT data interpretation based on civil engineering interpretation and geophysical data. 
Oh, uh, to but, yeah. Yes. Yes. You can read. You can yes. read the question. But the first one, how to correlate CPT data interpretation based on the civil engineering interpretation and physical data. Sometimes the interpretation of the CPT data don't, don't match with the name of the geology. That's correct. Because we must understand the CPT engineering using different term with geology. Clay in the civil term is size. Silt is size but geology is name of the mineral or rock. So different one. So we must be careful in the interpretation between civil and the geology. So in actually, CPT does not have relation with the geological name. CPT does show the strength of the rock. Maybe this in geological point, rock is maybe if the rock in the fresh condition is very strong, but in wetter it, or maybe less strong. So we must be careful because civil using the strength. Meanwhile, the geologist using the rock name. This was the first one. Second one, I think it's very DNRPL using the uh, geomagnet. As far as the, I know, uh, please let me, if you know better, as far as I know, there are no DNRPL, there's non aqueous spatial liquid have uh, magnetic properties which can be detected by geomagnetic. And usually it's very, the response of the, if there are some pollutant is very low if compared to the environment. This one. So if, if we want to know DNRPL, depend on the source, we can know actually from the source of the pollutant. That's my answer. Okay, thank you, Pak Budi, for the answer. And uh, the participant asking for the for the PPT materials. You can share to maybe Pak Wahyudi. Yes. Yes. Okay, no problem. Yes. Another another question from the participant. Uh, you can see. I have the a chat. question of seismic method to just comment with the. Same with the correspond with the informal aspect, just for land site identification. Can you explain the correspond with other such as mining oil on gas? Yes, because uh, you, we about the environment. Usually, talk about the cello. That was my uh, my slide. We talk about the cello. So in this case, why uh, we are using seismic? A ref refraction rather than seismic reflection. If for the exploration, yes, we can use some seismic reflection for the oil and gas. But for the mining industry, usually we are using we, we are using the seismic reflection rather than seismic reflection. Why? Because in mining there are many faults. If uh, you are using seismic reference, we must do some migration. It's very difficult, a pro a migration in the uh, software or migration uh, condition in the mining compared with fault for, on, in the oil industry. So maybe the result if you are using seismic reflection in the mining cause the ambiguity. This is my uh, answer. Okay, I think the answer is enough. Okay. Uh, I think there are no questions from the participant. If there is no question again, I think this is the end of our course for tonight. And before we end, we have we will have a 
photo session or maybe from Pawah Yudi. I, Do I you can have sell the, any to sell the material any? as well in in the I said I will sell in, give me five minutes less, less than five minutes I said the send uh, the material. Yes, thank you, thank you, Pak Budi. Okay, and we take photos for us. Yeah. Yes, Pak. Uh, okay. Maybe Mbariha, can you help us to take a pictures? Okay, to all participants, please open your camera. Mamita. Okay. Okay, for the first page, we can take a picture together on the screen. And then second page. Okay, third page. And the last page. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, Pak Budi, Pak Wahyudi, yeah. uh, and all the participants. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Budi, for the share Welcome. your presentation. It's very interesting and informative. Welcome. Good night, yes. everyone. You can leave the room. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, and tomorrow, yeah, quiz will be. Uh, yeah, tomorrow we have a quiz. Yeah, maybe yes. in at the end of the evening. Yeah, Harmita. Yes, Pawa Yudi. And tomorrow we have the two session, and the topic is about uh, environmental remote sen sensing with Prof. Josepha Tetuko from Chiba University, Japan. And uh, the next topic is uh, the use of geophysical technology for building of, of weather resource infrastructures. Uh, the instructor is Professor Dr. Insinyur Eko Winar Irianto from Kementerian PUPR. So I'll see you tomorrow, everyone. Thank you for joining for tonight. Uh, okay. Pawah Yudi, you can and this uh okay sure. yeah. okay thank you harmita thank you for all attendance we uh, see you again tomorrow yeah don't forget to download uh, this file from uh, pak budi celestio yes pak budi already dropped in the okay. chat box yeah. okay i Okay, I end this meeting now. Thank you. See you.